Seized by the English on the road to the coronation, Joan of Arc's trial was scheduled to be held between January 9th through May 23rd, 1431 in Rouen. Throughout her incarceration, Joan consistently held the truth as she knew it. She raised the siege of Orléans in obedience to her divine power. It was explained to Joan that her life would be spared if only she would bring herself to tell a jury tainted by political and economical interests, self-motivation and bribery, what they wanted to hear. Instead, she never lied nor swayed from her recounting of events. However, as the trial continued, it became obvious that the proceedings were merely a matter of formality. Joan felt that her fate was already determined. During the final week of the trial, Joan was shown instruments of torture and once again, she began wearing women's garments and renounced her voices and promised obedience to the church. She signed her abjuration and read, I, Joan, called La Pucelle, a miserable sinner after I recognized the snare of error in which I was held, and now that I have, by God's grace, returned to our Mother Holy Church, in order that it may be apparent that I not finally but with good heart and will I have returned to her. I do confess that I have had revelations from God and his angels, St. Catherine and St. Margaret, etc. And all my words and deeds in which are contrary to the church, I do revoke and I desire to live in unity with the church, nevermore departing therefrom. Several days later, however, Joan resumed wearing men's attire and expressed deep regret that she had renounced her voices. She was pronounced a relapsed heretic and a sinner for dressing in men's garments. She was sent to her death on May 30, 1431. There was nothing that Joan's comrades could do to help. They could only wait for long as the faith of the spiritual leader was sealed. Joan was captured by the English in an unsuccessful attempt to deliver Charles VII to his coronation. Instead of being slain in battle and dying a dignified soldier's death, she suffered the most ignominious fate that should befall any general. She was unjustly tried and found guilty of blasphemy and heresy. After an unjust and biased trial, Joan of Arc paid the ultimate price for defending the truth and her faith. She was burnt at the stake at the youthful age of just 90.